is jumping as we get you set for UCLA and St. Bonaventure. Roz Goldon Wood, a working the sidelines for us, and we say hello to her once again. Roz? Hey, Spiro. St. Bonaventure's Jalen Adams is the A-10 co-player of the year, and one of his biggest influences is his mom, Yolanda. He's even got her name tattooed on the inside of his right arm. He told me she comes to all of his games. Sometimes she doesn't even tell him. She just shows up. Yolanda sends her son a text before every game, and after each game sends detailed feedback. Jalen told me it's often, shoot the ball more, you pass too much. Going into his first NCAA tournament game of his career, she told him, relax. You've worked your whole life for this. Just be yourself. Guys. What a couple of years it's been for Jalen Adams, the senior out of Baltimore, former high school star at Mount St. Joseph's. Among the elite backcourt players in the country, we told you about him and Mobley, meantime UCLA, a tremendous inside-outside feel to this team. Jalen Hands, the freshman who's been in and out of the starting lineup this year, has been electrifying at times for the Bruins. And guys, what a matchup this is going to be. Holiday against this terrific backcourt of St. Bonaventure. There's Steve Alter, the head coach of UCLA. Fifth season in Westwood has this team back in the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in the last five years. Three trips to the Sweet 16 in each of their last three trips to the big dance. And somewhere in that Bonaventure huddle is Mark Schmidt, the 55-year-old Providence, Rhode Island native, year 11 up in Olean, New York. And what a season it was for St. Bonaventure, hoping to take the next step. Well, Mark Schmidt told us that he told his guys, hey, you know, we've been underdogs all season. And he's not worried about them being intimidated by UCLA and their history because he said some of those guys don't even know who Bill Walton is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, St. Bonaventure plays here, of course, every year in the Atlantic 10. Not sure they usually get this kind of ovation. Three busloads of Bonaventure fans making the five-hour trek from just outside Buffalo, New York. They are well represented and a loud chorus of boos that we heard here when the Bruins took the floor just moments ago. Definitely advantage bodies when you start talking about fans here. Right off the bat, Mobley knocks it off Prince's body and the Bonnies have the basketball. If you're Mark Smith, you know you don't have to be intimidated because you have great guards that can control the tempo of this game. But there's definitely an air of David and Goliath out here. Mm -hmm. St. Bonaventure, the at-large out of the A-10, finished second in the Atlantic 10 during the regular season, one game behind Danny Hurley's Rhode Island Rams. Got a mismatch already. Dribble drive, here comes the senior. Golden, we got a piece of it as Adams trying to take it right to the cup. How about the quickness of Golden with his feet to get in position? Didn't allow Adams to turn the corner. That could be very important going down the stretch here in the matchups and the switches. Yeah, Goldman did a nice job of just making sure him stand in front of Adams and then he contested and got a piece of it. That was shot. Aaron Holiday getting it going for the Bruins. Leading score in the Pac-12, better than 20 per game, second assist man in the conference. In the last four, he's averaged 26 points a game, so he is a force to be reckoned with. Matt Mobley, the senior, misses from deep. UCLA 21-11. Up and down season, when they were at their best, you got the sense that they can contend with any team in the country but so erratic at times this season. Goldman had it knocked out of his hands with 14 to shoot. Yeah, you can't be lackadaisical with the ball around St. Bonaventure. Their guards will come back and dig and take it away from you if you're not strong with it. Here's Holiday, the junior. Deep three, and he sticks it. I mean, he has been on a roll, doing a nice job, averaging 20 points. But as of late, he's had some big-time games. Courtney Stockard gets the Bonnies their first point. Stockard, who did not play in that semifinal loss to Davidson, had a hamstring injury. And when you consider the hot hand that this kid has had earlier in the A-10 tournament and late in the regular season, he was a huge loss. Yeah, but the last four games that he played, and again, he missed the semis that St. Bonaventure lost. In the last four games he played, he averaged 23 points and almost nine rebounds a game. Shot a tremendous percentage and got to the free throw line. So he's an extremely important cog, that reliable third scorer for St. Bonaventure. Good steal by Jalen Adams, and they're pushing the basketball up. There's Mobley. He loves to score big time, but Mark 
Smith talked about talked to us and he said, hey, this kid right here, Courtney, we have two great guards, but he's our most important player. Everyone talks about the two studs. They've got a big three if you talk to the bodies. Excellent start for Stockard as the whistle is blown at the other end of the floor against the bodies. When we talk about Courtney Stockard again, he's got the ability to really execute against mismatches. Big guys guard him. Uh, and he takes him outside. Smaller guys guard him. Obviously, he goes inside. He wasn't a starter the whole season. Dude. 14 consecutive starts after the first 15 games, he came off the bench. It's Aaron Holiday with eight, right? <laughs> you talk about the bodies with five, and there's Courtney Knox launching a three, and what a run Aaron Holiday's been on the last six games, averaging 26 points, shooting 47% from three. Beautifully setting the table for Thomas Welsh. A Redondo Beach, California native. And Holiday established himself outside, and then he goes and he makes the play inside. It'll be tough for St. Bonaventure to decide what they want to stop. Here comes Adams to the rack. Shot won't go. Battle for the rebound. Idris to key, unable to squeeze it. And the basketball back to the Bruins. You got to pay attention to Holiday. You saw him draw two players, including Courtney Stocker, who was guarding Welsh. And Obviously, Holiday just delivered it on the money. Yeah, not only the scoring that Holiday gives them, but the number two assist man in the Pac-12. Deep three in the corner. That is Prince Ali. And UCLA 5 of 5 here at the start. Adams is blocked from the back. Beautifully done by the freshman, Jalen Hands. Here he comes up the floor. You no know Welsh can shoot that three. Yes, he said. Nice little pump fake. And as you can see, spreading the defense because he's standing there shooting a three. Ready to shoot three. Here's Hands. Finds his spot. Tough floater. Mm. He'll shoot two. It's a wonderful start for the Bruins on both ends. Holiday setting the table, knocking down points and assisting. But on that defensive end, they've made it hard for the guards to penetrate. By the Bonnies. You know, oftentimes teams come out, particularly at this level, you know, playing for the 11th seed to go forward, and they're feeling each other out. Right now, UCLA is not feeling anybody out. They're just feeling it. Let's go back to Roz. I just got an update that UCLA's star freshman Chris Wilkes, who made the Pac-12 All-Freshman team this season, is not starting today for disciplinary reasons. He was late to the team bus on Monday, and that's why he's sitting out now. However, he will be available to play in tonight's game. Pac-12 All-Freshman team was Wilkes. Certainly a key cog in this UCLA team this season. Stockard well played by Goldman. And Prince Ali able to squeeze it in the corner. Giants, the man who stepped into that world starting spot tonight. See how much time Wilkes gets down the stretch. Uh, second chance as the Bonnies attack the offensive glass. The Drees to Key, the senior credited with the basket. Hands unable to connect on the floater and out of bounds. Last touch by UCLA. Just as advertised, three or three from the field, including two of two from beyond the arc, eight points, two assists. And it's early. It's been the size of UCLA. You can see seven rebounds to one. And also, like you said, man, Aaron Holiday has come out and is special. And they have used their size. And they give the bodies credit. They have battled and battled. And they're trying to deal with this size, which is going to be tough. Mm. Wow, a high low between Goleman and Welsh. And boy, Welsh would like to have that one back. And just a flat-out miss. This will be an offensive foul as Holiday trying to fight through the screen. A screen that time, and with Darian Griffin, the Jacksonville native, whistled for his first. They didn't get set. They set that screen pretty hard on Holiday. Although, again, it's sometimes when you get moving screens, you blame the ball handler who has got to allow the screen to get set before they move. So Chris Wilkes, the freshman who was slated to start today late for the team bus on Monday, as we heard from Rise earlier, has now checked into the game for the first time, and the Bruins turn it over. Wilkes, one of the top freshmen in the Pac-12 this season. Now better than 13 points per game. It's been a tough year for UCLA. Of course, it started in controversy. The three freshmen caught shoplifting during a team trip to China. Steve Dixon really was hanging over this program the first 
couple of weeks of the season. Steve Alford talked to us about that. He said Thomas Rush and Aaron Holiday have been fantastic as leaders and answering all the questions and is leading these young group. And they've had a pretty decent year after all the turmoil they had at the beginning. And now they have a chance to go on a run, just like the Bonnies, into this March Madness deep into the tournament. Yeah, but Matt Mobley is saying not so fast, my friend. And that drive right there, he's got a little giddy up to him. But Mobley has scored a ton of points, had a 29-point performance in the 8-10 quarters against Richmond, a game in which he hit nine threes. Here's Hands with four to shoot. That's a three from Hands. How about that shot? Shot clock winding down, and the freshman stepping up on the big stage. Very comfortable from the freshman off the bounce against some pressure defense by Mobley. No you see that guys is four for four from deep. No ill effects on that sprained ankle that he was suffering during the Pac-12 tournament. Mobley from deep, splash! He can score. He is a born scorer. And Jalen Adams struggling to get his game going, but Mobley now starting to pick up the slack. The senior from Worcester, Mass. Cuts it to five. Here's Hands looking for more. A little bit short. Weak shot, we got by to keep. Stockard finds his butt. I just love Aaron Holiday's game. You know, last year came off the bench. Obviously, Beyonce Ball is there. Back in that starting lineup right now, he's been huge. Aaron passed by Wilkes, another UCLA turnover. Here comes Adams to the cup. Or Bonnie's fans asking for interference. Call was never made by the officials, but the Bruins give it back again. Their fifth turnover. And Stockard barreling to the cup will shoot free throws. Well, the question on that call was, did that ball clear the rim? But first off, we know that Matt Mobley understands how to put the ball through the basket you know, on the drive, whether it's that one or beyond the arc. As you guys mentioned, he's a scoring machine. At all levels, he can score. And Mike Smith is really asking for that goaltending. We will get a chance to look at it. I thought it was. Man. Yeah, I mean, you can't review that. It's obviously a judgment call. But I just want to see it for us. <laughs> yeah, we can review it. <laughs> we can review it, yeah. First free throw from the junior soccer is good. This was that last sequence. See if it gets away from the cylinder after it comes. Nope, that's, that's basket interference. That's yes, goaltending, I should say. Goaltending. So Stockard goes one for two. Can the Bruins clean up their offense here? Four turnovers committed by the Bruins in the last 345. Holiday is tied up. What a defensive play by Adams. Possession arrow favors UCLA. And you said it best. Adams did a nice job of being able to slide his feet, use his strength, and been able to tie up Holiday without fouling. Another Bruins turnover. Mobley. Follows his own miss. Swallowed up by Wilkes. And Mobley somehow gets it back. Here comes Stockard. Oh, oh, right through the UCLA defense. He is special because on one end, Land, he's guarding a five guy, but then also you can play him with the basketball and he's comfortable. Smith talked about it. Coach Smith talked about when Adams was out early, he played him as a point guard. I'll tell you what, what we have seen in that exchange is that quickness may beat the size. Six unanswered for the bodies. Seven to shoot. Holiday surrounded, another turnover. And now St. Bonaventure starting to ratchet up the defense. Add a little length to that quickness. And you've got some defensive stops. They are spacing out UCLA. Tend to shoot. Nice, beautiful pass. Mobley to Griffin, and we're tied. Make it Bonaventure. Able to fight their way back. Taking advantage of the seven UCLA turnovers. And you're seeing a St. Bonaventure team has now developed its rhythm. 
And what I love is they're getting on the glass, this small lineup, and competing. Boxing out this zone has really helped them defensively. And suddenly, UCLA's offense has failed them. Six baskets for the Bruins and seven turnovers. As we approach the midway mark of this opening half in Dayton. Mm, good team. Uh, Gigi, a big coach, doing a nice job of sizing these guards up and contesting and blocking, sh uh, blocking shots. Wilkes from deep. Bruins needed that one badly after they blow a nine-point lead. I'll tell you what, that Goldman block kind of destroyed the rhythm immediately and gave UCLA some problems. But, you know, we're going to see both of these teams go off in spurts right now. That, that explosive. Mm. What a matchup between those two. Adams still looking for his first bucket. He's 0 for 6. Mm. Tough pass. Adams trying to save it. Does. But Adam. it's taken by Alex Olashinsky. Adams has gotten to the bucket. He's missed a two or three easy layups. And Holiday tripped up. And a whistle blown inside to our director. And if you're wondering why or how St. Bonaventure is sticking close to considering the play, that's the ninth turnover by UCLA. Stop Filthy! And I was waiting for that because that's the 14th point off of those nine turnovers. UCLA is just leaving the door open on a consistent basis. They can't pull away. And St. Bonaventure has really done a terrific job of turning them over and converting those turnovers. Yes, they have, because anything in half court driving the basketball, the Bruins have five lock shots. Gigi has four. And right now, if they turn it over, the Bonnies are doing a nice job of turning those turnovers into points. Three-second violation against the Bruins and turnover number 10. A look at the hard move to the rack by Stockard. Yeah, just being aggressive to the basket after the turnover. UCLA can't set up its defense. And St. Bonaventure has had terrific fortune in just going right at the Bruins. And this first half guy has kind of perfectly encapsulated the kind of season it's been for UCLA. At times, very good, which is very erratic. As those turnovers suddenly have become an epidemic. Five to shoot. Here's the senior Adams, co-player of the year in the A-10. Had to get that shot up in a hurry. And when you consider that Jalen Adams, their leading score is 0 for 7. And the Bonnies are only down a point. Mark Schmidt has to be at least relieved. Yeah, a couple of things. Aaron Holiday is doing a nice job uh, against Adams, against pick and rolls. He's one of the better pick and rolls players we have in the tournament. And then also on the switch, Gigi has done a nice job of blocking shots or containing these guards. Over this game advances to Dallas where they will take on Florida. Mike White's Gators on Thursday night. Chris Wilkes, a little bit too much from the corner. Isaiah Brockington, boy, trying to put one down with a left hand. Unable to put it down. Prince Ali was there defensively. Holiday from deep, and UCLA suddenly can just get nothing going. Bonnie's doing a nice job of just limiting them to one shot. And there's Adams from deep, and he is trying to get going. He's over eight. Ladarian Griffin, the junior from Jacksonville, unable to save. One point UCLA lead. Season they had. What a year it was for Schmidt and his staff. Because he's got the Bonnies in the NCAA tournament for the seventh time in their history and for the first time since 2012. Of course, a lot of people felt like they were snubbed a couple of years ago after winning the Atlantic 10 regular season crown. The 25 wins this year to tie a school record. And UCLA's offensive struggles, guys, continue. Yeah, after that hot start, they haven't been able to score in almost three minutes. Actually, over three minutes. Zero points. Aaron Holliday hit his first three shots. He has not scored in nearly 11 minutes of game action. And their offense has gone south right behind him. Eight to shoot. Stocker from deep. A little bit short. Offensive rebound as Taki tracks it down. Shot clock resets. Taki has been fantastic just scrapping on a rebound and picking up loose balls. And look at Griffin. <laughs> he almost got that with the goal in. Yeah, he has made that out of jumped up. 
Prince that lead from deep. Olashinsky is there getting his hands dirty. And that's where you want to go, weak side glass. You command that real estate, and you're going to get your share of offensive rebounds. Fourth most points in the Pac-12 this season by a player who did not start a single game. This is Nelson Caputo able to break down that UCLA defense. He wanted to pass that one, but Nelson got a nice little finger roll high off the glass, giving them some offense while Adams and Mobley are on the sidelines for the bodies, but they're set to check back in. Only average is about 10 minutes per game. As we cross the six-minute mark, Thomas Welsh has been awfully quiet, guys, in his first half. I know he's a 40% shooter from beyond the arc, but his advantage would be in the paint. He's got to stay there. Basket does not count. Brockington fouled before the attempt. As we take another look at the drive and finish by Caputo, the junior out of Toronto. That was like about it. as finger rollish as you could get. <laughs> yes, I love that he avoided the charge. Good minutes for the bodies by Caputo. Amadi Ikpizi, sophomore out of Buffalo, back in for the bodies. Jalen Adams in as well. Adams, if you've just joined us, one of the premier scorers in the Atlantic 10, just under 20 per game. Still looking for his first bucket. He's all bait. Stocker. Mm -hmm. Offensive rebound, Ikpizi. And then it's deflected out of bounds by Wilkes. Last touch by Adams. There's Mark Schmidt, Providence native, former assistant to the late great Skip Prosser. And both Loyola and Maryland and Xavier. Played for Gary Williams at Boston College. He's telling us about some of those experiences under Williams. And as intense a coach as there has been in the sport. I have so much that you pick up any of, of Gary Williams' habits as a book. Gary, a Hall of Famer, one of the outstanding coaches, but one of the more intense coaches in the game of basketball. Welsh had a good look at it, and he is now one of his first four. In some ways, it's incredible. UCLA still has a lead here. Bonnie's, though, still struggling at this end. They just six of their last seven as Stockard is fouled by Goleman. Stocker does a nice job when he turns the corner. He takes his shoulder and goes right into the defender while the defender is moving and drawing some nice fouls for the bodies. That's tough for UCLA. Goldman there. Last line of defense blocking a lot of shots. That's his second foul. And Steve Alford has a decision to make. We'll play the official bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness Bracket Challenge is ready for your picks. So get your bracket started tonight, NCAA.com, or in the March Madness Live app. What a story this kid Stockard has been, guys. First two collegiate seasons at Allen Community College in Kansas, and then missed two full years. A broken bone in his foot. Same injury, back-to-back -back years. Got through spring ball last year, came back from the first injury, hurt himself on the very first day of practice. He had been dreaming about this moment as he has pushed the Bonnies in front for the first time tonight. Their first lead and their lead score, Jalen Adams has struggled, and they have found a way to gain his lead. Wilkes from deep. Here comes Stocker, doesn't have numbers. And this will be a loose ball foul against the bodies. Bodies foul number one, Idris Taki. It's on Idris Taki, the Snellville, Georgia native. That's his first. Idris has played extremely hard, though. I love his activity, Land. Well, I mean, yeah, that's kind of exemplified the same Bonaventure attack. You see how quickly they went from defense to offense? UCLA at this end, one field goal in the last six plus minutes. And they have changed defense. They've gone man to man. They've gone one, three, one. They've gone two, three zone. Nice job by Mark Schmick and the staff just changing it up. Stockard disrupting Holiday on the drive and last touch by UCLA. Turnover number 11. And I think that's the apt description, disruption. That's exactly what St. Bonaventure has been able to do particularly with their quickness and their length. And as I said, you know, with Goldman on the, on the bench, UCLA gets a little bit smaller, and that plays into St. Bonaventure's hands even better. 
San Juan Adventure, second place finish in the 810 behind URI. There's a deep three from Mobley. That won't go. They lost to Davidson in the 810 semis. That ended a 13 game winning streak. A team that a lot of people around the country didn't get a chance to see much of this year. Top 20 RPI team, guys, in what was just a magnificent season. And that momentum, they're just picking it up right where they left off after Davidson. And you can see a confident team. And they, they got an air of this David and Goliath atmosphere as well. And, you know, with the leadership on the floor. And Welsh and Holiday leading the way. These guys got their acts together, but right now, their biggest problem is inability to stop the quickness and the length of St. Bonaventure. And on the other end, their turnovers are just giving extra possessions to St. Bonaventure. St. Bonaventure has 11 more field goal attempts than does UCLA. First points of the night for Jalen Adams. Holiday unable to answer. And the rebound deflected into the outstretched arms of Courtney Stockard. And that, that's not good news if you're a Bruins fan. Jalen Adams, bodies are up three. He just has his first bucket. If he gets going, then it is tough going for the Bruins defense. And comes Stockard swatted but fouled as well. Well, you can see that the freshman out of Chicago into the game is whistled for his first. Sorry, Spiro. You can see what Mark Schmidt is doing right now. He is isolating uh, Stockard on anybody that's guarding him. If they put a big on him, he'll step outside. They put, uh, and, or he'll step outside and take him off the bounce. If they put somebody smaller on him, he's going to post him up. Right now, he's the key. Got to hit some free throws, though. Our friends at True TV are here to remind us that March is True TV Awareness Month. Why, you ask? Because a week just isn't enough. You can catch some of the best comedies in America all year round right here on True TV. So thrilled to have you with us. Opening night of March Madness. These things are officially underway. Already the Radford Highlanders and the Big South have advanced. Headed to Pittsburgh to take on Villanova on Thursday. And the winner of this one goes to Dallas, where the Florida Gators await. Shot clock down at 9. Where do they turn for offense? Here comes Holiday, And he has now missed six straight shots. Can't get one better than that, though. And he got point blank to the rim and just missed it. The Bruins guys with one field goal in the last eight minutes and 50 seconds. Points in the paint, the advantage bodies, the smaller group, but they're getting to that bucket. Beautiful setup by Adams. McKeezy, however, could not finish in the whistle against the Bonnies. Bonnies now injuries to key. Reminder to stay tuned. AT&T at the half is coming up. Casey Stern, Seth Davis, Brenton Haywood, and the great Candace Parker is standing by from our Atlanta studios. They'll give you their thoughts on what we have seen, guys, we expected this to be fun and intense. And so far, the game has not been a disappointment. Not at all. In Atlanta studios, led by Casey Stern and those Brennan Haywood and Seth and the great Candace Parker, they're going to have a lot to talk about because I know they're impressed with how the Bonnies are playing so far in this first half. Bonnies came here trying to get their respects. After what was a great season for them. Shot clock down to five. This is Ali inside and contact will put Prince Ali at the strike for two. Ali the sophomore out of the Bronx. He has an old man game. Yes he does. He's played in every game this season after taking a red shirt last year recovering from knee surgery. He's been a, a solid addition for Steve Alford. You mean an old man's game. I, I resemble that. You know. You know, there's nothing wrong with the old man's game. You, just goes on, you play at your pace. Nobody speeds you up. Nothing flashy. And he gets the job done. I'd say that Len has, has aged very gracefully. I don't know. I'm going to start calling him Professor Len over here. That's the way we the knowledge. That's the way we used to play. Uh, Lee, one of two at the line. And this one last touched by the Bruins. First UCLA point, guys, in five and a half minutes. Sixty seconds left in this opening half. UCLA to feel good about themselves. They got to string together one or two stops, uh, depending on the number of 
possession St. Bonnie's gets and on the other end put some points on the board. Adams one for nine. Now the stocker has been a high man. Well played defensively. Aaron Holiday did a nice job and timeout by the Bruins. Steve Time Alford out. wants to UCLA. talk this over and get a nice play coming out of this timeout. UCLA Bruins, St. Bonaventure Bonnies. A tournament summary, no conference with fewer than four bids has produced the national champion since 1990. Both the Pac-12 and the A-10 with three bids this season. The two conferences represented in this game. And it has been fun. It has been intense. As we kick off this 2018 NCAA tournament. See what Steve Alford drew up. 35 seconds left. The Bruins have shot just eight for 22 so far, 36%. This is on Lee from deep. Good look at it. And then underneath it, Peasy squeezes it. A reach and foul against Wilkes. Freshman, freshman, freshman. <laughs> what can you say about him? They make those type of plays. Bruins left as the Bonnies bring it the length of the floor. Well, first of all, to clarify, even though UCLA had a foul to give, so that foul by Wilkes wasn't devastating, you want to be able to use that foul to give in the front court. You don't want to use it back there. Eight seconds, shot clock turned off. With a weave in the front court. This is Chakee putting it down. That's a nice play, and rightfully so from a guy that's a kid who has played extremely hard, rebounding the basketball, comes up with a big bucket at halftime. Great spacing, little bit of weave in and out, pull up on balance, bucket for the bodies. That would have been a nice high. time. That would have been a nice time to use that foul. To upset the rhythm of St. Bonnie. No field goals for UCLA over the final six minutes and 31 seconds. Rise standing by with Mark Schmidt. Coach, what was key in exploiting them for so many turnovers? Yeah, we're playing, you know, our zone. We try to match up out of it. It's been effective so far. You know, hopefully they don't figure it out. Um, but it's been really effective. We're, we're getting to the shooters. We're keeping the ball out of the paint. Um, so hopefully we can continue to do that in the second half. Now, Jalen Adams, he was cold from the field for much of the first half. What are the kinds of shots you want to see him take yeah, to get rhythm? It's a good sign. They're up by five, and, you know, he has only at five two points. We just got to get him off. You know, he had some easy ones that he missed, and, you know, we got to run some stuff for him. You know, hopefully he can get, you know, get one, get comfortable, and, you know, get on a roll. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Guys. Mark Schmidt, the 810 Coach of the Year 2016, suffocating defense from his bodies as we reach halftime. 28 to 23, St. Bonaventure in front. We'll get you to our Atlanta studios for at and in the half. Next. Well, you take a look at these numbers, neither team lighting it up. The story is volume scoring, and St. Bonaventure with 11 more field goal attempts than UCLA, and that's attributable to those 11 turnovers that UCLA has committed 14 points off those turnovers, and that's the difference in this ballgame. First half stats presented by Northwestern Mutual. UCLA, who just joined us, hit five of their first six shots. They were three of 17 from that point on. Steve Alford keeping his Bruins in the locker room a little bit longer than usual. A lot to talk about for UCLA as they have their hands full with this gritty St. Bonaventure team that has made the five-hour trek from Holy and New York. Also blown here off the ball inside as we check in with Roz. I spoke with Coach Alford of UCLA about the turnovers and the zone. And with the turnovers, he said, we were careless. They set the tone with their aggressiveness. We stopped running, and we were passive against the zone. He wants to see more attacking of the zone, go inside and out. Instead, he said his team was too stagnant, standing around and watching. Guys. The Rives right now, they're on their heels already. As Idris Taki, who is very, very strong with some of the non-box score stuff, guys, in the first half, earning a trip to the free throw line. He's senior, Snellville, Georgia native. You know, I thought he did all a little bit. He was two for two from the field. Like you said, didn't have a lot of points, just four, but six rebounds. And he's playing amongst some trees from UCLA and just got his hands on balls. He was everywhere with the steal. Foul 
Packers charge down. Holiday was second. So here's Holiday scored on his first three attempts. But was held scoreless, as Smitty pointed out, for the final 17-41 of the first half. And Thomas Welsh, who is usually their number two, has been awfully quiet. There's Welsh in the corner. Now Holiday with six to shoot. Holiday spinning and right into the teeth of that Bonnie's defense. That zone is just really confusing the Bruins. Bonnie fans ready to blow the roof off this place, but Adams couldn't hit. Here comes Holiday. Up top, Golem. He never had it cleanly, but he's able to put it down. That's one way to beat the zone in transition. <laughs> Don't allow him to score on the other end so they can set it up. But again, Wilkes had an opportunity for a layup, and he passed it up to kick it out to the three, which, you know, to me, in my estimation, it's not good judgment. Take the, take the bucket that you have. Oh! Here comes Adams, swallowed up and fouled by Goleman. Good job by Adams. Adams. To the free throw line. Just you taking the angle, going right see. into GG. Goleman, Goleman tried it's to block that shot, but there. picked up that foul. But as you can see, as a guard, you are taught you don't want to go away from a big. Man, I want to try to take your sides away from you going into your body. Yeah, you don't leave room for a shot blocker. That last UCLA bucket by Goleman, by the way, their first field goal since the 631 mark of the first half. Nearly eight minutes between baskets. But St. Bonaventure continues to be aggressive to the basket. And, you know, as we all know, we learned from grade school, the aggressor gets the call. And that's exactly what's happening right now, whether you agree with him or not. Here's Goldman. And they saw the zone defense. Another D2 layup. from Ali. No. Never hit the rim, so the shot clock does not reset. Holiday, no. Every shot contested. Stocker, nice. all the way to the rack. Seven point game. And you saw Goldman back off. He's got three fouls. And they continued to go to the basket, go to him, and he had to retreat. Chris Wilkes, who did not start this game, was late for the team bus on Monday. But offered going to him to begin the second half in a much needed bucket. For the Bruins. Well, the guys in the studio talked about it, particularly Brendan Haywood, how to solve the zone. You got to slow down, get some paint touches, high low. With that size of the Bruins, they have not done it. Only the sixth made three for UCLA tonight. But they penetrated the zone. They've gotten as deep as the restricted area, and then they pass it out to a guy shooting the three instead of going straight to the basket. That's happened three times in the last several UCLA possessions, like right there. Holiday. Holiday's not bad. First points for the Pac-12's leading scorer since the 17-41 mark, opening minutes of the first half. When you have such an advantage with that size, man. You could put Ali in the middle, and you can go down to those big guys and being able to at least, if you don't make it with a shot, you should get some offensive rebounding lanes with those with the size that the Bruins have. Seven to shoot, Stocker showing the handle. Crossover, couldn't finish over Goleman. And then a loose ball foul against the bodies. Goldman, very fortunate they did not call that fourth foul. Mark Schmidt, he wanted it, Land. He, he is going after the referee saying that's a foul. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> you agree that it was a foul, huh, Land? I thought it was as well, but Goldman did a nice job of trying to let up and versus picking up that fourth. So a PZ charge for the first one the second. Here's Wilkes. A smooth freshman inside on Lee is there to tip it home. By Prince Ali. Just like that, UCLA, seven unanswered points, and we are tied at 32. And the winner of this game advances to Dallas, where they will take on Mike White and the Florida Gators on Thursday. Adams. This is Nelson Caputo off the bench. Traveling violation. Good job by Wilkes being able to get into the lane. And there's Prince Ali. They have that type of size where they should be able to get on the glass, especially against the zone, which is hard to box out players when you don't have a particular man that's assigned to you to box out. And you saw Prince Ali have to go baseline behind the basket to establish that position on the weak side glass. Any way you got to go, you got to do it. Another UCLA turnover. 
Their 13th of the night. And Stocker just keeps on Bobby coming. Stocker. Bodies back in front. Ali quickly down the paint, and that'll be a goaltender. Boy, how quickly did Prince That's Ali get Prince down Ali. the floor. As Stocker whistled for the goal. The Temple at that power four position for the Bonnies. He's been a nightmare of a matchup for the Bruins, especially in transition. Yeah, see, he's being guarded by Goleman right now, and he recognizes that he can use his quickness and his length beginning on the perimeter to create a mismatch. This is Adam, seven to shoot. That's a long two. Well short. Jalen Adams, the Cole player of the year of the Atlantic 10, still struggling. He's one of 11. Look out. This will be a blocking foul. His body's flying all over the place. Chris Wilkes, much more aggressive guy as early stages of the second half than we saw him his first couple of minutes in the first half. But that's second on Stockard. That's more like it. Wilkes going to the basket with intent. And Stockard had his right foot on the restricted area line. So that's automatic. Good eyes. Len Elmore being able to see Stocker's foot right there on the restricted. Do they need more of that, I think, from Wilson? Yeah, Another ball yeah, having yeah, to make some plays. For the Bruins, there's true. a lot of pressure on Holiday. Maybe get him off the basketball, but so he can drive Shinsky, off the pass. Shinsky, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Holiday's got six turnovers. He's, he's got the pressure not only of handling the ball and running the offense, but having to score. Somebody's going to lift some of that pressure off his back. Wilkes, a freshman out of Indianapolis, second among all Pac-12 freshmen in made threes this season. All freshman team in the conference. Second leading scorer by Aaron Holiday. Just under five minutes gone by. And the winner advancing to take on Florida. Well done inside. Latarian Griffin, strong move by the junior out of Jacksonville. I don't know how he made that one. Amongst all the trees, found a way to sliver in with the left. That was a nice job by Griffin. Most improved player this season in the Atlantic 10 Conference. Gets the bodies a one-point lead. Ali, beautiful cut. Prince and great Ali. find by Wilkes. And you said it. That cut set it up because Wilkes had nowhere to go. Body standing. And Ali had a nice timely cut to the Bruins. So Bonaventure led this game by five at halftime. And now they're going back and forth to see the ties and lead changes. As these two teams battle into the night here in Dayton. Blocking foul underneath Olashinsky a little bit late. Well, also the official pointed to the restricted That's right. area line as well. I mean, Land, you talk about the Bonnies down one where Jalen Adams hasn't really scored the basketball for them. And also Mobley has been quiet. This is pretty good area for Mark Schmidt. If he can get one of those two guys going, uh, they maybe can get some separation. So here is Mobley at the free throw line as we check in with Rise. Guys, UCLA has a big name, and I spoke with Matt Mobley about that, and he said, yeah, you know, I know they're a national powerhouse. They won, like, 10 championships with Coach Wooden back in the day. It's a great tradition. I have respect for that. But we're not scared. We're coming in here to play. He said, it's a tournament, so we'll just go ahead, play our hardest while we're out here, and we don't feel like the underdog. We expect to be here. So, so Coach Schmidt was wrong. They do know <laughs> who Walton and Kareem and people like that are. I wouldn't, under, I wouldn't underestimate these youngsters. I'm sorry. One off on the championships. One of you see the winners of the Aaron national Holiday. titles as Aaron Holiday able to connect from the outside. Holiday desperately trying to get his offensive game going. But uh, certainly contrasting histories between these two programs. St. Bonaventure's seventh all-time appearance. The 49th lead time for UCLA. Tied for the second most with UNC. Stockard unable to hit. Rebound by Welsh. Olashinsky running the paint. Fouled underneath by Taki and more free throws for the Bruins. They did not get to the free throw line much, guys, in the first half as Taki is whistled for his third. Wide open look for Aaron Holiday. One of the few and with ball movement that gets him a, a look with no contest. Here's Olashinsky, a sophomore, New Mexico kid. 
One of the top bench scorers in the Pac-12 this season, Steve Alford, meantime, no stranger to the NCAA tournament, has led four different programs to the dance. Of course, Iowa, Missouri State, and New Mexico. Terrific run leading the Lobos. As the Bruins unable to squeeze it, and the bodies bring it the other way down three. Big fella Alex Osinski just too quick to give it up. He had an opportunity to hold the ball for a second, a little patience. He might have had a chance to go strong. Here comes Stockard. Beautiful little fake. Nice. Showing the entire arsenal. He does a nice job of explosion off the bounce, and then he gathers himself and gets on balance once he gets into that lane. 19 for Stocker, the kid who averages just under 13 per game. Bruins meet time at this end and figured some things out. They've hit their last four. This is Wilkes, and the freshman dialing it up from deep. Three-point basket, Chris Wilkes. Second among all Pac-12 freshmen in made threes this season. We're up idolizing our good buddy Reggie Miller. Had a chance to play in front of Reggie in Westwood a couple of weeks ago. His best impression at meet time at the other end, Ladarian Griffin. A couple of big plays here down the stretch for the bodies. That's not a bad guy to pattern your game after being able to shoot the basketball. He has some similarities in body style in Reggie Miller, the Hall of Famer. Uh, Welsh coughs it up with a Shinsky unable to squeeze it. And we cross the 12 minute mark, second half. Adams, Stocker backdoor boy, he was just blanketed by Olashinsky. The officials say he walled up. And so the contact was not called. And they show both Syracuse and Arizona State guys sneaking into the field. And they will be here to battle it out. In the second half of our doubleheader, Ian Eagle, Jim Spinarco, and Allie DeForest will have to call. Another look at that foul against Olashinsky's appear to be the right call. Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, you go up strong, you tip the ball. I think the second time he got him maybe a little bit on the hand, but the hand is part of the ball. It's questionable, but it's moot now. It's, it has all got They went inside on his own. Olashinsky left totally unaccounted for. Five points for the sophomore from New Mexico. And the Bruins back in front by a deuce. St. Bonaventure, 25 wins. Late 13-game winning streak that ended in the 8-10 semis. Top 20 RPI team. Tied their school record for single-season wins. That 1969-70 team that went to the Final Four. Behind the Hall of Famer, Bob Lanier. That's one of the reasons why Adams is having a tough time. Mm. He chooses to take a jump shot over a seven-footer or a 6'10 guy instead of putting it on the floor and dribbling around him. G.G. Goleman is whistled for the foul here, and that is his fourth. That's a big foul. 11 minutes and six seconds left. Alford has to go deep into his bench. Guys, how surprised are you at how quiet Thomas Welsh has been in this game? Welsh right now is going to be summoned or at least looked as though he was, and now he'll sit again. Well, which is very, very quiet so far in this game, the number two offensive threat. I think I think the pace of the game, particularly the way St. Bonaventure pushing the ball up and down the floor, kind of gets well shot of the rhythm. And then, obviously, he wasn't being aggressive enough against that zone. Instead of staying within range in the paint, etc., he kept drifting outside. And way, like you said, Lynn, they have him on the zone at the perimeter. It's going to be hard for him against these smaller guys to make an impact offensively. And then defensively, he's trying to stick guys that are much smaller than him and quicker. Caputo misses a three and then Stockard. Let's see who they get here on the reach in. It's on Courtney Stockard. That'll be his third personal. Remember, Welsh is on the bench not because of any foul trouble. He's only got one personal. He's got 12 rebounds, but one of four from the field. He's got three turnovers. He's just not in the game. And I think um, Steve Alford wants to gain a little perspective, watch where he can fit, and then put the senior back in the ball game shortly. Missed three-pointer from Aaron Holiday. Leading scorer in the Pac-12, but he has been quiet since that strong start in the early couple of moments of the game. Stocker. Tough reverse attempt. Olashinsky clears. Stocker is like the energizer. <laughs> he does not stop. He's playing with the same energy he had right at the tip. 
course, missed the 8-10 semifinal loss against Davidson with a hamstring injury. So if he is fully recovered and then some. And we cross the midway point of the second half with UCLA and St. Bonaventure fighting for a chance to move on to Dallas and a date with the Florida Gators. Here's Stockard. Slithers inside, off the hands of Griffin and Abani's turnover. Well, that's a good idea. But unfortunately for Griffin, I don't think he was ready for it and was not a lot of room. And there's UCLA pushing the basketball. They had him. Chris Smith wide open. They missed it. Abani's have dragged the Bruins into a street fight here. Low scoring, defensive oriented game. UCLA solved his own defense. Holiday from way outside. If you're a Bruins fan, you need somebody else to draw some penetration. Holiday has had to do it all. He got to penetrate, he got to shoot it, he got to defend. Somebody else has to make some plays on the offensive end for the Bruins. Well, that last shot should serve to stretch that zone a little bit more and allow them some gaps to drive. Here's Adams. Has not been his night. Magical find. Griffin underneath. And he gets the friendly bounce. Three-point game. First points for the Bonnies in three-plus minutes. What an atmosphere here at Dayton. Wilkes had it stripped. Chris Smith, the freshman, gets it back to Olashinsky. Olashinsky. Five-point UCLA lead. We come up on the final eight minutes. Olashinsky has played well. He's done a nice job inside and out. I like that little baseline jump shot. The lefty knocked that one down. It's a tough shot. Seven points, four rebounds for the sophomore. Here comes Adams. Right back against Smith. Won't go. Griffin trying to flail at it. And back comes UCLA. Adams is having the same kind of game that we saw in the first game with Joel Hernandez. And they keep trying to force it. Jalen Adams dropping dimes. Here they Winner again advances to Dallas and a Thursday date with the Florida Gators. Guys, what stands out? UCLA shooting has improved. A lot because they haven't been turning the ball over as often. They've been able to actually run some offense. Their defense for me right now, they have turned it up. Only guy they have a problem with is Courtney Soccer. Other than that, they have Mobley and Jalen Adams. They have held those guys with three of 22 shooting. And Soccer, and he buries the three. And just like that, it's a two-point game. 24 for the junior out of St. Louis. And where would the bodies be in this game without Courtney Stockard? That would be a blow I mean, because their two leading scorers are struggling. This is the freshman, Chris Smith. Not sure that's the shot that Steve Alford wanted there. Especially that early in the offense. My goodness. Lenny had talked about UCLA's second half shooting. They were 11 of 18 before that miss by the freshman, Chris Smith. Yeah, they were able to run their offense, but I'm not sure what Chris Smith was thinking. He's a 19% three-point shooter. Oh. Here comes Adams. Here to be some contact in the back. Well played. Griffin takes it back, puts it down, and he's headed to the free throw line. That is great hustle by Griffin. Being able to follow the basketball, being active. Adams misses the little layup. Might have got five, but look at Griffin. Now you got to get on the ground. And then he comes up with a nice bucket and a chance to score for an and one. Well, there's no substitute for grit and effort. And what St. Bonaventure is lacking in shooting percentage, they're making up for it in that grit and effort and toughness. Co-winner of the A-10 Most Improved Player Award this season, unable to complete the three-point play, and we are tied at 51. Adams almost came up with that one on the steal. Mm -hmm. UCLA confused. Who got possession? We come up on the six-minute mark. And what has been a charged atmosphere here in Dayton, better than 14,000. Dangerous pass by hands, broken up. Stockard. 
Bristol. <laughs> Bodies back in front. <laughs> oh, man. Stockard he... has taken the game over. Relentless in transition. Puts his head down there and is saying, I dare you to try to stop me. Another turnover by UCLA. Once they start turning the ball over again, it's like putting high octane in St. Bonaventure's tank. Look at Stockton. He is driving this extremely hard and putting a little extra mustard on that one. He could have laid it up on the left hand side, but he decided to go right. And once again, off the turnover. That's that is just killing UCLA. Mobley, they've got Mobley. everything working. Nine unanswered for the bodies. Four point lead as Steve Alford wants a timeout. For the bodies, his name is Courtney Stockard, and what a game he's had. Nine of 19, 26 points. He's been relentless to energize his body. He's knocked down threes, but more importantly, he's putting pressure on the Bruins in transition. Just driving and putting his head down. 26 points, four rebounds, and also four steals. Spiro, big time. What a road to recovery for Stockard, as we told you earlier. The young man who missed two full seasons broke the same bone in his foot back to back years. What a player he's been for the bodies this season. Ali. And at the summit by Griffin, well played. Bonnie's back the other way. Bonnie's doing a nice job on the glass as well. Welsh was there, and he just took it away from the seventh quarter. Nine straight points for St. Bonaventure, a team that has lost just once since January 24th. Traveling violation, one of the few mistakes made by Stockard tonight. Well, this thing turned around the last three minutes and 14 seconds. UCLA has turned the ball over three times. St. Bonaventure has scored on all three of those turnovers. When you look at the totals, St. Bonaventure 25 points off of 17 UCLA turnovers. That's enough to give a coach nightmares for a long time. That last Bonaventure turnover, guys, their first in 21 minutes. Welsh. Still quiet. I don't like him out there shooting those threes. I mean, if you're wide open, yes. But he has smaller guys running after him. Use that size some kind of way against his zone and seal somebody and take up some space in the paint and maybe even draw a foul or two. How about that? The winner of this game advances to take out Florida. Matt Mobley. Monstrous three. straight for the bodies. Adams poked it away on lead takes and this will be a reach in foul as Mobley a little bit overly aggressive on that sequence. As well got a timeout but the Bonaventure bodies opening up a seven point lead. Matt Mobley the long range sniper. And this has been fun. The winner of this one advances to Dallas. A Thursday night date with Chris Chioza, Mike White, and the Florida Gators. Seven to shoot. Wilkes leaning in, and this will be a block. And Stockard can't believe it. Neither could Mark Schmidt. Watch the left arm right there. 13. That's why it could have gone either way. Mm. Stockard. He's in legal guarding position, both feet on the ground. Slides, maybe. Now, guys, it's a huge call. It's number four against Stockard. Mark Schmidt's going to roll the dice and keep his junior on the floor. And at this point, why not? Just three and a half left. But Stockard's going to have to tone it down a little bit. He's been very active defensively, so I'll let him go there. Holiday going glass. Huge shot for the Bruins to cut it to five. Yes, it was. I mean, great body control. Threw his body into the big of the defender and then able to knock that one down. First points for the Bruins in five minutes. Mobley turns the corner. No, the tip by Griffin won't go. Make it to Key trying to put it down. And back up the Bruins. Holiday from Key. Out of bounds, last touch by the Bonnies underneath. 
As LeBarian Green loses his right shoe. And you see Stockard let him go. Once he got past him, he didn't gamble. He got both hands in the air. Showed the officials where they were. Didn't want to pick up that uh, disqualifying fifth. It was offered and trusting these five to get the Bruins back in front. There's Ali, the Bronx-born kid. Outside, Wilkes. A little bit short from the freshman. What a play by Welsh to keep it alive. Shot clock resets. They are doing a good job on this matchup zone. Ali, the fake, buries a three. That was huge. Ali with the old man subtle game. Nice little pump fake. Took his time and knocked down a three for the Bruins. That might have been the most patient, most focused <laughs> offensive possession for UCLA all evening. And maybe the biggest contribution of the night by Thomas Welsh to bang out the loose ball and get him an extra possession. Stockard. Mm, missed that one bad. And we hit the two-minute mark here at day a two-point lead for St. Bonaventure. The woman thought about it. Back to Ali. And what a save on the baseline by Idris Taki to get it to his mates. Mark Schmidt wants a timeout as they try to catch their breath. 139 left in Dayton in a two-point game. Game reset, two timeouts apiece. And both teams will be in the bonus on the next whistle. As we expected this to be fun, two evenly matched teams with the winner advancing to take on Florida. You didn't expect it to be this much fun. <laughs> but no, I mean, the pace of it, even though we got, you know, scoring right around 60 points, the pace of it is something that's been remarkable. The way these teams have pushed it up the floor, particularly St. Bonaventure turning it over, turning UCLA over. Adams gets it back, fires a three. This has been his night. Very off balance on that shot, man. I thought he didn't take his time to get, didn't get his feet set. I'm really surprised that the ball did not go through. Or the officials, guys, disagreeing with the call. They were about to say offensive foul, and then they put it on the bodies. It's on Adams. And boy, what a huge call that is. Instead of Bonnie's basketball, it is a one and one for Aaron Holiday. Well, let's watch it. Let's see if it's a first foul. Mm. Oh, my goodness. That's on Holiday. Clever, crafty move because the referee on that side couldn't see it, and this one had it. Zeroed in, but he was overruled. Wow. Holiday takes advantage, trying to become the first UCLA Bruin to lead the Pac-12 in scoring since Reggie Miller back in the 85-86 season. And if I'm St. Bonaventure is coming down the next time, I think the ball has to go through Stockard. He doesn't have to shoot it, but he's the guy that UCLA worries about because of his capabilities, particularly in a mismatch situation. UCLA with seven straight to tie it at 58. Adams. Can he find his stroke here with under a minute left? And a date with Florida hanging to the balance. Adams. Splash. Two two. That is St. Bonaventure back in front. You got to have that. That is confidence. Big. No matter what, awful shooting, but... Jalen Adams knocked down a big one. He's, before that, he was one of 15 from the field. Who's counting, Lynn? Who's counting? <laughs> Not now. Right now, he's one of one. <laughs> you take a look. Off the bounce right here. He hit this shot. He's had trouble with all evening. And then at the most significant moment in the game, he knocks it down. And as I said, Mark Smith is a lot of faith in this young man. Smitty, you know what that psychology is like. You've been struggling all night. You're a shot maker. His team is relying on him. you got to take that big one at the end. And Adams with one of the biggest shots of his career. He has, Spiro, and you're right. I mean, he's been struggling, but a lot of confidence. He's still been aggressive as the amount of field goals he's taken. But on that shot, finally on his jump shot, I thought he was on balance to be able to knock that one down. And if he had missed, what would you have said? <laughs> uh, take the next one, young fellas. You got to take the uh, next one. I don't one. know about that, man. You got to take the next one. You're the lead scorer. Trip, trip to Dallas on the line. You got to go for it. 
What is Steve Alford drawn up here? 38 seconds left. The Bruins down to Holiday. One of the great players of the country this season. Nearly lost it. Gets it back. Knocked away. Adams has it. And he is fouled by Ali. Bonnie's still in the bonus, so one and one here with 27 seconds left. Over and penetration. A chance to extend to a four point lead. Over penetration. That's what happened with Holiday. He has to recognize he had drew three defenders. And you always have a bell out, especially with the size on the floor for him. Good job right here. Now you have to give it up right now. You got to find somebody because of so many people you've drawn and you collapse the defense. Well, that's exactly what happened. That's where the over penetration came from. Dribbling into problems and then gets surrounded. Big free throw for the bodies and Jalen Adams. Yeah, makes it two possession. Hard to believe the kid who was barely recruited by the big programs out of Baltimore, the senior, one of the most prolific scorers in the Atlantic 10 the last couple of years, has given the Bonnies a four-point lead with 27 ticks of the clock left. Bruins basketball down four. What's Steve Alford telling his guys here? Well, I think right now is you got to run some kind of play where you get a chance of quick hitter, and then on the defensive end, you got to be solid and you got to try to go for the steal and you got to play the foul game right now if you're the Bruins. Best available shot. Try to penetrate for two. Holiday offensive foul. Well, what's the call here? The officials quickly well, stepping between them as well, words were exchanged. St. Bonnie's was grabbing at the ball. Holiday wouldn't give it to him. And the officials just intervened to get the ball back. Number four on Holiday and a second consecutive force. Yeah, it is. I mean, Griffin is just standing there all alone. You're Holiday. You have to give the basketball up. Well, this will be a reaching foul. Aaron Holiday can't believe it. Trying to dislodge it away from Adams. It's on Wilkes, the it's freshman. The and now a double bonus situation. Two free throws for Jalen Adams. St. Bonaventure team that tied a school record this season, 25 wins. Hoping to take the next step and move on to Dallas where Mike White and the Florida Gators await. St. Bonaventure shooting under 40% at 38%, but they've gotten to the line now. What are they, 13 of 18? Well, they have dominated points off turnovers and points in a paint for a group that is much smaller than the Bruins. That is all hustle and determination. That's right. You said it earlier, Bonnies have lost just once since late January. That was in the 18th semis against Davidson, a game that they played without. Courtney Stockard, offensive foul. Aaron Holiday has pretty much lost control of his emotions. Holiday has fouled out, and his season Likely over. Definitely a push off. And as you can see, frustration for Aaron Holiday. 63 58 with 12 seconds left. And I can see where the frustration comes from. St. Bonaventure is swarming him on a consistent basis, and eventually you might lose it. But you got to maintain the motions, keep them in check. Unfortunate finish to what was really a, a truly great season for Aaron Holiday, yep. but this St. Bonaventure defense was just too much for the Bruins, and the lights are nearly out for UCLA. St. Bonaventure, guys, certainly has not looked like an 11 seed here down the stretch, and what a matchup that will be on Thursday against the Gators. It is scary because Mobley didn't have a great game. Jalen Adams, not at all, and they are about to win this game against the Bruins with 11 seconds left. Yeah, I got a feeling that uh, Courtney Stocker is going to get an awful lot of attention from his teammates. <laughs> Masterful coaching performance tonight by Mark Schmidt, the 55-year-old Providence native and his staff. And St. Bonaventure can taste it. Three bus loads of fans that have made the five hour trek from only in New York, and they will not leave unhappily tonight. It was worth it, huh? It definitely <laughs> was worth it. 
long bus ride, but it was worth it seeing their team capitulate the big bad Bruins. And more importantly, again, I talk about Courtney Stocker, the guy who missed their last game because of a hamstring pull. And watching him in practice yesterday, you know, I asked Mark Smith, is he playing? He said there's no way that he's going to be able to keep him out. Yeah. And obviously we see why. And there's some other guys that stepped up as well. I thought that well, Darren Griffin came in and gave them big time numbers. Uh, big time play for us. Hustle and points in the second half. They had to play smaller. And they've done a nice job. And they are excited. And injuries Taki came out. Yes. Particularly in the first half. Was kind of a glue guy. Did a lot of little things that don't show up in the stat sheet. So this is a total team effort. Even though, you know, we give Stocker a great deal of credit. And then Jalen Adams down the stretch did what Jalen Adams is expected to do. And we talked earlier about the Bonnies being snubbed by the committee two years ago after winning the regular season crown in the Atlantic 10. That is a distant memory tonight. As they put the finishing touches on this one here at Dayton. One three-pointer won't go from Isaac Wolf and we are through here at Dayton. The St. Bonaventure Bonnies moving on to Dallas where they will take on the Florida Gators on Thursday night. What a game by the Bonnies. They came out and just fought and scrapped Lynn. They did. What a game for them. Big time. Yeah, that's one of those situations where you see emotion really step up and take over. And then look at that. <laughs> hey, look at Mark. It just, their team reflects the coach. <laughs> Emotional, having fun. You know, you don't get here all the time. Mark Schmidt talked about the chip on his players' shoulders. They earned this one tonight. And it will be St. Bonaventure against Florida. What a matchup that'll be. As we will have it for you on Thursday night. Right here. Standing by with Mark Schmidt. Coach, you have a big old smile on your face. It's the first NCAA tournament win for this program since 1970. How big is it for St. Bonaventure to get over this hump? It, 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 it can't get better. Um, you know, our guys just fought. You know, it, it just, we persevered. We just had some toughness. We made big shots. And, you know, in 1970, you know, Bob Lanier got hurt. He didn't have a chance to play UCLA. And that's, this is for him. Coach, what impressed you most about the play of Courtney Stocker? Oh, I played unbelievable. He's the reason why we won. Um, you know, he hit big shots. You know, our, our zone was good. We just fought. We just fought. I'm just so proud of, of what these guys have accomplished. And there's more fighting to do. You're going to play against Florida. Now, I'm curious, do you go on the plane right now and immediately start scouting on the way to Dallas, or do you take a moment and enjoy it? No, it's, you know, Florida's got, you know, whatever, four or five days on us, so... We'll be watching tape on the plane. We've got a 2 a.m. flight, and it, wouldn't, it can't be a better flight ever. All right. Well, enjoy that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Courtney. Congratulations, Courtney. What allows you to play so free and focused tonight? I just went out there and played my game. Uh, I got to give it all to my teammates. If it wasn't for them, it, 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 this wouldn't have been possible. Uh, Jay found me. Matt found me. Um, I got good looks, and I just played my game. I'm glad you mentioned your teammates because Jalen, Matt, it wasn't necessarily the hottest shooting night for them, but what did you see in the way that they fought back and the way that your team fought back? Um, it just shows how hard we've been working. Um, that's just a testament of, of what we've been doing all year. Um, back in conference, we started off 2-4. and four. A lot of people thought we were done. Then we went on the street, and, and we still got work to do. What helped you go on that streak? Because now this is your 26th win, the most in school history for wins in a season. What makes your team special? Uh, back in the offseason, we set some goals for ourselves, and and this is a special group of guys. And when we set those goals, we just knew <laughs> we we knew we knew we, what we had to do. We had our work cut out for us, and we went out there and accomplished something big. Yes, you did. Congratulations. Enjoy it, and good luck in the next round. Thank you. All right, guys have to feel good for that kid Courtney Stockard missed two full years with the multiple injuries to his foot he has been off the charts as the St. Bonaventure Bonnies their first tournament win since 1970 advancing 
to Dallas in that first round date with the Gators. I mean, Spiro, they shot six for 28. Their leading scorers, Matt Mobley and Jalen Adams. They could get anything going, but they were plus 10 in the paint, plus 27 on turnovers. Lynn, this was a big time win for the body. I said there is no substitute for grit and effort and then a little bit of guts. And that's what they demonstrated. And that's why they're going to Dallas. Whatever shooting issues they had tonight, that zone defense for St. Bonaventure stole the show. St. moving on as they defeat UCLA. For Len, Steve, Ron, Spiro, Didi saying good night. The postgame show comes your way next on True TV.